Welcome to another John's Films. Today we're going to review the new DaVinci Neural Engine that comes with DaVinci Resolve 16 Studio. It enables speed warp, face recognition, footage upscaling, object removal, and a new auto color and shot match. Let's get into it. I'll go through them in the order that I think they're most impressive. Starting with the shot match and auto color feature, this was one that previously existed but they've changed it to now use the neural engine to calculate which colors and which shot match they should use. You can access the auto color in the bottom left hand panel of the color wheels on your color tab. It is an A inside a white box. If you click that your current node will be graded to what they feel are the best natural colors for that scene. Next up is shot match. This allows you to match the tones of one clip with another. You'll notice here I'm grading up a outdoor scene treehouse, and this treehouse is more of a green and brown hue, whereas the skyline that I've been using of the drone footage over Korea is more blue and tan. So if I were to now highlight in the clips my Korean clip and right click on the clip I want to make it look like, I can choose shot match, and now it's changed it to more of a brown and green tones than the blue and tan that it was. Is it perfect? No, but it gets it close. It's a good starting point. Now we're at the start of something interesting. This is our media bin page. And what I'm doing is highlighting all of the clips that I have in my project and right clicking find people. This is now looking through each of these clips, likely using a trained model and a convolutional neural network to analyze and see if it recognizes that people are in these clips. What you'll see is it is using primarily the GPU, which is a good sign, that's more efficient for that type of network, and it is matching individuals' faces to each other. So not only does it say, yes, there's people in there, it'll say, I've identified four or five different people in these clips, would you like to name them? So now if I were to name them, you can see it's identified which ones are the same and given them each a bin. This allows me to sort out maybe actors or sort out spokespeople who are in the videos and be able to dynamically build bins associated with their name so that I can quickly find the footage I'm looking for while I'm doing some editing. This next feature would be my favorite if it worked perfectly every time. Unfortunately, I went through three or four clips before I found one that I could get to moderately work. What we have to remember is this is still in beta and I'm quite excited about the feature. It starts when you put a mask around an object that you'd like to remove, or power window here, around an object that you'd like to remove from your footage. You then can either keyframe it or track it. In this case, it's simple motion. I just keyframe it real fast. You can either keyframe it or track it and then apply the object removal resolve FX on the right hand side. This opens the open FX panel for object removal. The first thing you'll do is give it a shot. Click scene analysis. This looks in the search range. Number of frames is designated below before and after the frame in question as it goes frame by frame processing and determining what should it replace that black bag in my case with. So it's looking at all the frames around it and it's understanding what would make sense to be there. Now Blackmagic has a couple of suggestions if you run into issues. If you have a complete gray out, it's just a gray circle left, Blackmagic suggests that you hit build clean plate and what that does is just take a best guess next to it, kind of like you might do in Lightroom or Photoshop, just a, a stamp tool, replace something next to it. Uh, it has a suggestion around the number of frames in the search range that you might use if you get something more like this, where it's not quite right, it's sort of hazy and not really the right idea there. Those can be found in the new feature manual for DaVinci Resolve 16. I'll have linked in the description below. Great tool to play with though, and as you can see, Given that it was on a small scale in a large frame, uh, I wouldn't call it usable for anything major, but hey, YouTube probably worked just fine. Overall, however, I'd say it's done an okay job. Now, if the object removal worked perfectly, it would occupy this slot, the final slot in the Neural Engine review, because it's my favorite feature. Now, I've got a clip here that's shot at 24 frames a second. This is in a wind farm over Ohio. Now, when you speed this up, the motion blur comes into effect where it just 
goes faster, I have enough data in my frames to be able to smooth out the movement. However, one of the common challenges in slowing footage down would be that you don't have enough data to fill in your timeline. At 24 frames a second, slowing it down just a little bit is pretty, tr pretty tough because you're getting down to 20, 18, 16, maybe even 14 frames a second. And it starts to look juddery. You get these jitters between each frame where not enough uh, data exists to fill in the real-time playback. And you can see a little bit of the bouncing around here. Uh, if you look at the windmill and you look at the arms as the arms move around in a circle. So what do you do? Well, there's a new tool in the Retime and Scaling Inspector window. You change Retime Process to Optical Flow, and the new Neural Engine tool is called Speed Warp. This is available in Studio only. When you choose Speed Warp, get ready to get comfortable, because it takes a minute. Even on my machine with 32 logical processors and a 2080 Ti graphics card, which you see ends up doing all of the work, it's now inferring between two frames what should happen. This is actively filling in the gaps that I've got between my frames and does so quite spectacularly. Now, playback and trying to see it in the timeline becomes difficult, so I decided to render out just this clip and play that back in a full window so that we could see how well this happened. Let's take a look at the results. I think you can see how clear and smooth this is, even out at the tips where there was very little data. What amazes me the most is that it can change color in the background and really doesn't give any rolling shutter type effect where the blades appear to bend. Instead, it stays on top of it really well and changes through the different contrast points amazingly. For now, this use of neural networks to fill in gaps between frames takes the cake for me. If they can get that object removal working perfectly, I'll be really excited. Thank you for watching what's going to be a series in the DaVinci Resolve Studio features. To make sure you see the rest of them, please hit subscribe down in the bottom corner. Also, it makes my day. Thanks for watching. See ya.